So I like to read a verse in Matthew chapter 6, and this is the famous Sermon of the Mountain, uh, Jesus' is, uh, ministry, and as he is ministering to a group of disciples that are on the slopes of, of a mountain, uh, he uh, touches different subjects. And right here on verse 16, he touches the subject of prayer, prayer and fasting. Okay, and he says, And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may uh, be, not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So, here's a, a, a short uh, portion of the sermon. And I'd like you to notice uh, bef uh, before uh, anything that Jesus said, when you fast. He didn't say, if you fast, but he said, when you fast. Now, I know you would like me to announce our backyard barbecue that is going to happen in two weeks, uh, and it's in our announcements. And when we announce a backyard barbecue, everybody cheers. Yeah! Barbecue! Hot dogs! Uh, hamburgers! All sorts of grease! I want a grease burger! I want all these things! Awesome! Food, I mean! You know, even people that don't come to church necessarily when they know we have our backyard barbecue, they say, oh, I'll drop by. I'll go there. I want to be with you guys with the barbecue. This is a very popular thing, you know, to eat among Christians. We don't have fun with anything else but eat. I'm just having fun, huh? <laughs> but it's one of the realities. But, uh, you know, uh, our focus should be also in spiritual things. And uh, not being a very popular uh, subject, I'm here to equip you. As a pastor, I'm here to equip the saints. That's what we do. So when we have an exhortation, when we have a, a time of ministry, we preach the Word of God. I enjoy preaching the Word of God, praying for the sick, all this. But I'm here also to equip the church. And one of the things we need to understand in order to be spiritually equipped is that God wants us uh, to, to pray and want us also to have times of fasting. This is why Jesus said, when you fast. Now, uh, not the Lord that the Lord needs um, in instructions from us when we pray, because some people, they feel like they have to give instructions to the Lord. They need to say, oh Lord, and they tell all their story. Oh Lord, you know I've been here and I've been there and I've crossed the street and I met that lady. And people do all these prayers and they're kind of explaining their situation to others, to God and all these things. It's not that God needs your instruction, but not God needs you. And He placed you here on earth so that through you, through your presence, the anointing of God in your life, through the glory of God in your life, that He might shine into the lives of others, touching others with the power of the gospel, touching others with the power of His love. He wants to use you. So fasting and prayer, it's a very important uh, thing. Now, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 17, this, this was uh, uh, probably uh, a year later, we don't know uh, uh, how long later, but it, was, it wasn't at the same period. Uh, Jesus was passing by with the disciples and on Matthew 17, 14, it says when they uh, were, uh, the multitude came to him and the man kneeling to him saying, verse 15, Lord, have mercy on my son for he is epileptic and suffered grievously for oft times he falls into the fire and oft times into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, to your disciples, and they could not cure him. Wow, so this man kneels before Jesus. Notice that Jesus is preaching the gospel everywhere. There's a crowd following him. There's a tremendous miracles happening. And he's not only doing miracles, but he takes time to teach people, takes time to have fellowship with people. He eats and he drinks wine with them. So he's not constantly fasting. But at this particular moment, this happens. They have an encounter with the man that brought his son to the disciples and they could not heal him. Now, I don't know if you relate with this. I kind of relate with this because in a season of my life that I personally needed healing, I went to the church and I wasn't healed. I don't know if it ever happened to you. People pray for you and you're not healed. Hello? 
Are you here? <laughs> we like those times, those seasons. I like those seasons of revival. When we pray for people and people are healed of all kinds of diseases. I remember uh, when, uh, when uh, I was studying uh, first ch churches that I studied in Canada, there were so many miracles that became common. And, and there was a miracle. People, oh, a miracle. Oh, okay, miracle. Yeah, big thing, miracle. And someone will come, I was healed from cancer. Oh, cancer. Okay, I healed from cancer. Big thing. And people get used to the presence of God. And as Christians, we can get used to spiritual things and we can get used to what happens and to what doesn't happen. And this is not normal that someone is brought to the disciples and they don't receive healing. But let me tell you, maybe you came to this church and even the pastors and pre people here intercessors prayed for you and you didn't receive healing. There's still a resource, there's still someone to go. You can go straight to Jesus because God is here and the disciples cannot heal you, but Jesus can. But here is this man kneeling and crying and explaining the situation of his son. And uh, well, Jesus healed the boy and uh, there was a great miracle and he rebuked the disciples. He rebuked because they didn't have enough faith. And then uh, at the end of the day, the disciples met Jesus kind of uh, to, to brainstorm about what happened during the day. And they asked Jesus, Jesus, why, why is it that we were not able, able to heal this boy and you were able to heal him? So on verse 21, uh, Jesus told, told the disciples, this, this was a very specific cast of demons. This was a demonic power in operation. Even though uh, the, the illness is mentioned as epilepsy, so there was an illness, Jesus said this illness has a, a demonic origin. And this specific demon cannot be cast out except through a discipline of prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. So this is one of the, the, the reasons why we fast and pray. It's because we want to have a breakthrough. We need God's grace. And it seems to me that the disciples were at their backyard barbecue before. I mean, they were enjoying the presence of God. Even the disciples of John the Baptist were coming uh, to, to, to Jesus to say, How come we fast and the Pharisees fast and your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said, because they're with the bridegroom, because this is a big celebration, this is a season of revival, so it's not time to fast, but the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken away, and in those days, they will fast. If you've been here lately, you know, I preached this, this uh, verse of scripture very recently. Now, prayer and fasting build up your faith. What is fasting? Fasting has been practiced by humans and animals. So, if you're a human, or if you're an animal, no, no, you're not an animal, so. But humans and animal, animals both practice fasting. Even animals do this. You know, uh, in, the, in the days that there were no social security, there was no Bayer, no Pfizer, no uh, pharmaceutical companies, people had to rely on natural medicine, on different things, and they relied on the basic way of healing, which is fasting. You know, even my dog fasts. And I, it's not when I neglect giving, giving food to the dog. But even my dog, when his uh, stomach sick, we put food and the dog doesn't eat the food. I don't know if you have animals or uh, a whole, or, but if you have a cat or a dog, if they're sick, they will not eat. They, they will wait. So fasting is a form uh, of, of healing also, a natural way. Now, the Bible mentions at least 74 different uh, uh, times the word fast or fasting. So there are 74 references in the Bible. And fasting is uh, often feared and people do not talk about this. It's not very popular. Two reasons. Because sometimes people associate fasting with what Christians, wacky Christians will do during the Middle Ages. Fanatic Christians. And we're not here to be fanatic. So this is one of the, the reasons why people don't talk about it. Also, because we love to eat. And we just hate the idea of self-sacrifice. I mean, you know, we have so many restaurants around the corner. We have so many good stuff here to eat in Canada. Uh, I, was, I was having a nice time with Pastor Tony yesterday. And they went to, to Dairy Queen to buy one of those uh, 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 ice cream cakes. Do you like those? The Oreo cookie ones. Oh, that's awesome. I cannot resist to that stuff. And imagine if I, if I weren't, uh, if I didn't have sugar problems, I would eat the whole cake. But I just enjoyed it. I said, oh, mm, yummy. I want another slice. 
Now can you imagine we're celebrating a birthday of someone and we're fasting? It's not a lot of fun. So uh, I understand why people don't like to talk about these things, but a biblical definition of uh, fast is uh, abstinence of food for spiritual purposes. And also, Richard Foster defined fasting as the voluntary denial of a normal function for the sake of intense spiritual activity. Intense spiritual activity. Have you ever went through times or seasons of intense spiritual activity? I like it. You know, I'm a pastor, I, I should enjoy it. But I like intense spiritual activity. I like when the move of God is on. I like when people are jumping and yelling and they're crazy for Jesus. I like when people do extravagant things for the Lord Jesus. I just don't like to sit down in church and just wait. You know, is it, is it over? You know, you know when is it is going to be over? I hate seasons of church like this and sometimes uh, you know it, it's kind of a drag the church you know you drag the church and you drag through the service and you say come on come on come on finish that message you said it all say amen <laughs> <laughs> now in the old testament uh, the, the, the jews were condemned by the law to fast on certain occasions so the law said, you need to fast on this specific occasion. In the New Testament, uh, it's not the law, it's a privilege. Fasting is a privilege and we should learn how to fast. And during the next weeks, I'm going to talk about this subject because in September, I'm calling a 21 day fast for this church. I mean, you're not forced to do the fast, but I'm calling this fast and I'm going to explain you step by step why we're doing this and how we're going to do it. Now, fasting is a means of obtaining blessings that you need to. And in the Bible, as, as I conclude this part, let me mention that it happened a battle against the, the tribe of Israel and the Benjamites and uh, 18,000 of the Israelites were killed in one battle. 18,000 people. That's a lot of people. You know, when you think of in tragedies that happened recently, you know, the Empire State Building, uh, uh, not the Empire State Building, but the Twin Towers falling, all these things that happened, we heard about, you know, 3,000 people dying, 4,000, imagine 18,000 with a population that was considerably lower than ours. That, that was a lot of killing, a lot of people. And they were so upset with this defeat that they decided to take one day to pray and fast. So the leadership called fasting and prayer. You know, godly leadership calls for fasting and prayer. The United States of America had at least three or four presidents that called days of fasting. George Washington called days of fasting, the whole nation. He said, I'm calling a fast over the nation of the United States of America. So even presidents did this. And we should understand that fasting is not that popular. And uh, even for, in the past century, for almost a hundred years, no book was written about fasting. Isn't that awesome? That today we can talk about fasting and we're not afraid to talk about it. Even if we're in the land of McDonald's, even if there's a, you know, a Tim Hortons at every corner, even if you, know, you, you, you can uh, grow in all directions in this nation. But let me tell you this. If you want to grow spiritually, there are spiritual disciplines you need to practice. And Jesus didn't say, when you, if you fast, but Jesus said, when you fast. Now, uh, fasting brings deliverance, it brings um, uh, also seasons of, of breakthrough. Now, in the in Judges chapter 20 and uh, uh, verses 26 to 28, as they were asked, shall we go on the battle? The Lord said, go and tomorrow I'll give them into your hands. Uh, so, do you need a spiritual breakthrough? That's the question. Some of you were here uh, earlier in the morning and we were praying for different things and I, and I asked, you want to pray for this or you want to pray, what are your prayer requests? And several people here said, I want to pray for this person that has cancer. I want to pray for my son. I want to pray for that person. Do you need a breakthrough? Let me tell you. God doesn't need you to, to uh, originate this breakthrough, but He's counting on you. He's counting on us. So fasting, it's an important thing. If you need a spiritual breakthrough, it's time to fast. Jesus said, when you fast, not if you fast. And the Bible assures us also that He will reward us. Now, uh, in 2 Chronicles 69, last verse, it says, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole 
earth to give strong support to those whose heart is blameless towards Him. Is your heart blameless towards the Lord? Certain times we do things that we shouldn't. We say things that we shouldn't. We, we take actions. We, we, do, we do things that are not necessarily pleasing to the Lord. But let me tell you, when you take time to fast, when you take time to seek the Lord, and when you take time to say, Lord, here I am, use me. You know, even if I don't eat, you know, men shall live not by bread alone. So it's not, we don't depend on bread for survival, we depend on God for survival. There is a food that is a heavenly food, and God will sustain you during the times of fasting. So we're going to learn for the next couple of weeks about fasting, and uh, today, at the end of the service, I'm still going to share a Bible verse uh, right after Pastor Jordan takes the offering, but right at the end of the service, I'm going to take you part one of our preparation for 21 days of fasting in September. Let's give a hand of applause to the Lord.